Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I'm going to be giving you lots of DIY and inspiration on things that you can make to put your Christmas trees and Christmas greenery in for the holidays. Let's get started. I purchased these books from an estate sale. I just loved the black leather with the embossed detail and they even have a little bit of green on the binding. So I thought they would be perfect for Christmas. So I'm actually gonna make a box out of them. I cut this piece of wood to put at the bottom to keep it together because I don't want to permanently attach these books. So I'm gonna make a square and then I'm gonna take this Christmas ribbon that I had on hand and just simply tie it around the center of the books and it is as easy as that now i have this very unique beautiful piece to put a christmas tree in and actually i think this would look great year round you could just change out the ribbon but i didn't permanently attach anything if i wanted to use the books in a different way after christmas I wanna give y'all another idea of what to do with vintage books. Now, obviously this is for fall because I have not redecorated my master bedroom yet for Christmas, but I just took two vintage books in fall colors and I just put one sprig of greenery in the pages and then tied it together with some jute twine. It was a really simple, easy thing to do, but I think it looks absolutely beautiful. Pickle jars are a must keep item. They are the perfect shape and size for so many different projects. We are going to be using brown lunch bags that you can get for pennies at the store. I'm gonna start with the smaller pickle jar. I put it inside of the brown lunch bag and then I put a rubber band over the top of it and then I am going to roll the lunch bag down until it is even with the top of the pickle jar. I put the bigger pickle jar in the bigger lunch bag, but it still had a good bit of room around the pickle jar. So I decided to stuff it with plastic bags. And then I put a rubber band over the top of the jar, but there wasn't enough room to roll it down on this jar. So what I ended up doing was actually putting the bag inside and taping it. You could also hot glue it as well. And to hide the rubber band, I just took some jute twine and wrapped it around the top and tied it with a little bow. To embellish the bags, I'm going to be using the IOD Merry and Bright stamp. Unfortunately, these are not available anymore. However, they are very similar to IOD's crockery stamp. So I'm going to be using the IOD ink in the color tomato and I'm going to ink these up and stamp them on the bags. I'm doing the, it after even though it's a little bit harder to stamp around its surface because I wanted to make sure I got these stamps in the middle of the bag. For this project, I'm gonna be using these shipping tubes that I had, but you could absolutely use toilet paper rolls or paper towel rolls, whatever you have on hand. But I did like the shipping tube because it was nice and thick. So I took it on my miter saw and I cut it into three different pieces. Now I'm gonna take this vintage music paper that I had and I'm going to cut them to the same size as my rolls and then I'm going to hot glue them on. I'm trying to keep this project really quick and simple so I'm using hot glue but you could definitely use Mod Podge. And y'all, this project is totally customizable to whatever you wanna do so just take it as inspiration. You could use different sheets of paper instead of music sheets. You can make your rolls different sizes. You can line them up in a long roll which I think would be very pretty or you could do like me and do a set of three. So I'm gonna take my three rolls and I am just going to hot glue them together. That way they stay exactly where I want them to be. And then I'm gonna take some jute twine and just wrap it around and tie a little bow just because I really like the way that that looks, but you could definitely also use some Christmas ribbon. And now it is perfect to add some little bottle brush trees or some Christmas greenery. A 
If you are a crafter, then you probably have lots of empty paint cans laying around and they are perfect to use for Christmas time to either put greenery or Christmas trees in it. Now I'm gonna be using the IOD bushels of Holly Mode on this one. IOD no longer sells this one. However, I do have resin castings of this on my website if you're interested. When you are using a mold, you want to brush your mold with cornstarch before you put your IOD air dry clay in. That way the clay easily releases from the mold. I'm going to be putting Christmas trees around my paint can, but I have so many other ideas for this. If you have other IOD clay molds, you could definitely put them on here and paint them in Christmas colors. You could decoupage or you could do a custom little Christmas paint on your paint bucket and I think that that would look amazing. So I'm going to glue all of my Christmas trees all the way around the paint bucket and then I'm going to take this beautiful green color and paint the entire thing. Once my paint was dry, I decided to add some white wax. To do white wax, you simply brush it on and then you take a paper towel and wipe it off. And I think white wax pairs perfectly with the IOD clay molds because it really brings out all the amazing details. And I think especially for this piece with the Christmas trees, it kind of made the Christmas trees look like they had snow on it. So I absolutely love the way that this piece came out. Y'all let me know what y'all think about it. I thrifted this set of green canisters and I thought they would be perfect in my kitchen for Christmas. One of them had a lid and one of them did not, but I didn't think that was a big deal because I knew the one without a lid would be perfect to put a little Christmas tree in. I'm gonna be using the IOD traditional pot transfer. It has a page of white labels that I think would be perfect for this project. I like to use a little bit of painter's tape to keep my transfers in place. And all of your transfers come with a transfer tool and you simply rub it over your image and it will transfer on to your canister. If you love this traditional pot transfer, I do have it available on my website. You have the white labels, you have two sheets of black labels and the blue labels, which is my personal favorite. And it is a perfect addition to these plain canisters that you see all the time at the thrift stores and they really transfer very easily onto these glossy white canister sets. And of course, I will have a link in the description to all the products that I use in today's video. I purchased this beautiful, huge Afghan at the thrift store for $2. And I really want to put it under my tree, but it is constantly getting in a fight with my vacuum cleaner. So I'm gonna fix that today. I've had a tree box around my trees for years, long before it was even a popular thing to do because I just love the way it looks. And if you have a robotic vacuum cleaner, you need one of these. This is some free wood that I got from my neighbors. They tore down their dock and I asked them if I could have the wood instead of them bringing it to the dump. To figure out the measurements of my box, I simply just measured the base of my tree and I'm building a box that will fit around the tree holder. My box ended up being 28 inches. I am just going to be using two and a half inch wood screws to put my box together. And then I am going to paint it white. It would also look good if you left the natural wood, but I am going for a very white look this Christmas. So everything is getting painted white. And once it's dry, I will lightly distress the box. Now my box is ready to be placed around my Christmas tree base. And then I'm just going to put the afghan inside and arrange it in a way that I think looks pretty. This box was so simple and inexpensive to make and I just love all the layers of white I have going on now and I have one less fight to break up each day. 
Next, I'm gonna show y'all a U-shaped Christmas tree that I've made and sold for years using free fencing that was given to me. The first thing I'm going to do is cut down a bunch of 12 inch fencing pieces. And then we are going to put together a U-shaped box using two by fours. To get the measurements on what you need, first you need to measure the base of your tree and then figure out what wood you want to use. Once you figure out how many pieces of wood you need across your box, then you can measure that and cut out your two by fours to that size. I hope that makes sense. It's really hard to give exact measurements because it really depends on the type of wood that you are using. Once you have all your wood cut out, I use construction screws to make the U-shaped two by four box. And now I am just attaching my fence boards to that base using wood glue wood glue and my brad nailer and you're just going to continue to attach your wood pieces all the way around your box most people put their trees against a wall so a u-shaped is fine because once it's up under the tree it really looks like a box and it makes it really easy to slide it under the tree even after your tree has been decorated Next, I'm going to paint the box white just using ready to use Walmart paint and then I'm going to lightly distress it. I want to add wording to this box. I simply just printed this out on my computer just using regular paper and I'm going to use carbon paper to transfer it on to the box. After all my wording has been outlined, I take my water-based Sharpie paint pen and paint on the letters. This is my absolute favorite paint pen to use and it is in my Amazon store if y'all are interested in it. It lasts a very long time and it has a very matte look to it that I really love. And this box just slides right under your tree. This box definitely has a more rustic look to it, but I love that it looks like a little fence around the tree. And as you can see, they are very easy to make and put up under your tree. If you watch my channel, then you know that I am a sucker for little kitchen items. How cute are these tiny little loaf pans? And I have two different ideas for them. So the first one, we're gonna take these little tiny spindles. These come from, you know, years ago that used to be popular to have that trim around your kitchen cabinets so these are the little pieces that come from that and they are perfect to make little tiny feet so i'm simply just going to hot glue them to the bottom of one of my baking pans now it looks really adorable just like this but i want to add one more little thing this is a sheet from iod's ephemeral melange transfer and i just want to cut out a little bit of this red wording and i'm going to transfer it onto my pan and i think just this little tiny embellishment makes a huge difference in this piece for the next pan, I'm gonna be using four of these wood rounds that you can get from pretty much any craft store. And I'm also going to be drilling a hole in one side of my pan. I'm gonna add some antiquing wax to my wood rounds because I wanna give them an aged look. But if you are going for a more holiday theme for this piece, you could definitely paint them red or green. Once they are dry, I am going to hot glue them to the bottom of my pan, creating little tiny wheels. So if you haven't guessed it, I am creating a cute little wagon that will be perfect for little bottle brush trees. To create a handle for my little wagon, I'm gonna be using this brown floral wire that I have, but any wire you have on hand would definitely work for this. I'm just gonna put it through the hole that I created and just do my best to create a little handle. It does not need to look perfect. I'm definitely going with a more rustic handmade look on this piece. I just love the way that this came out. I think it is adorable and you could definitely do this with any size little loaf pan that you have. And if you have any more ideas for these little loaf pans, y'all leave me a comment below. Mm -hmm. 
If you use spindles for projects like me, you probably end up with all these little cutoffs that you just cannot throw away. So in today's video, we are gonna do something with these little spindle cutoffs. Bottle brush trees are so popular right now and I think they only gonna get more popular. So make sure you stock up on those after Christmas sales this year. I'm just trying to figure out which trees I want to put with wood spindles for a pleasing arrangement. And then I'm going to use wood glue to attach my bottle brush trees. The bases of these trees are round already, so I'm just going to leave them. I am not going to be distressing this piece, so I'm just going to give it two coats of white paint. And it is actually really easy to kind of scooch your paintbrush around the base of the bottle brush tree so I can also get the stand that the bottle brush tree is on. If your bottle brush trees do not have a round stand, it is pretty easy to remove them from the base. And then you could just drill a hole and glue them into your spindle. How could you not love spindles and bottle brush trees? And if you do not have any spindles, you could simply paint candlesticks like I have in the back and it also looks really great. For this project, I am going to be using three different size pickle jars, but whatever size jars you have on hand would work as long as they are clear glass. I'm gonna be taking the tops of these jars and spray painting them black. Next, I'm gonna take a can of fake snow and I just want to lightly spritz the inside of the glass jar. You don't wanna to spray too much. You wanna give it like this semi-transparent look where it's kind of frosted. So you can kind of see the before and the after right here. Now I'm gonna take three different size bottle brush trees and hot glue them in the center of my jars. You don't have to hot glue them, but I just wanna make sure they stay in the exact center of my jars. And it's also really easy to remove hot glue from glass if later on you wanted to take this apart and use these glass jars for a different DIY project. I wanna put some fake snow in my glass jars just about to the base of my bottle brush tree. So I'm gonna use a combination of this soft snow, which looks very realistic, and this fake snow that is more like round balls, almost like little snowballs. I think the combination of these two types of faux snow look really good together and definitely gave me the look that I was going for. I purchased this set of little tiny terracotta pots at the thrift store, but I'm pretty sure you can get them from any craft store. I wanna give them an aged look, so I'm gonna be using Fusion Milk Paint in the color Hotel Robe. This milk paint is available on my website if you are interested. It comes in a powder form, and you just mix it with a little bit of water. It's one part water to one part powder. However, I want to go for a kind of whitewash look on top of the terracotta. So I added a little bit more water. And that's what I love about milk paint is you can kind of customize it to whatever look you're going for. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the milk paint onto my terracotta and I'm going to take a paper towel and just kind of wipe it off. And I'm going to continue to do this until I get the aged kind of worn down look that I want. Now you can stop here and these would be great for year around. And I also want y'all to keep this technique in mind for bigger terracotta pots that you want to have a nice aged look. I love the way that these turned out. But since we are doing a Christmas video here, I want to add a Christmas touch. So I'm gonna be using the IOD letterpress stamp. You get three different small fonts with this one. And I wanna add the word joy. It's the perfect word for Christmas when you have three things. I'm using IOD ink in the color black and a thin mount. I do have these thin mounts available on my website. They are definitely something you need for stamping and I recommend ordering two of them. One to keep the full size, which is very large, and one to cut up like this. I have one that I cut up into all different sizes. That way I can pick the perfect size for each project. Mm -hmm. 
If you have an old pot around your house that you are not using anymore, do not throw it away. We're gonna turn this pot into a faux enamel pot. First, you want to paint the entire thing black. I am just using Rust-Oleum spray paint. And then once it is dry, I'm going to paint the pot white. I'm going to be using white chalk paint and my paint sprayer to do this. Once your paint has dry, you want to take a wet rag and bring back some of that black through, just like you would see in an enamel pot. So you want to hit all the edges of your pot. You don't have to do this step, but if you wanted to have that high gloss look that enamel does, after you distress your piece, you could hit it with some high gloss spray paint. After I sprayed it with the high gloss, my paint did start to crackle. I don't know, sometimes this happens on metal. I'm not sure why, but I'm just gonna go with it. I think it kind of adds to the uh, rustic effect. I got these huge cardboard tubes for free off the side of the road. I just knew that they would be perfect for a DIY. So I want to cut them down to about 11 inches. Now it ended up being um, a little difficult to cut this with my miter saw because they are so tall. The little safety guard was in the way and my saw couldn't go all the way through and I had to keep turning around. So I think in the end, this would have been something that may have been easier to cut on my table saw but I did end up managing to get it cut all the way around and so now we are ready to move on to the next step I'm going to be using DIY's liquid patina for this project my friend Jackie over at Ruth and Ruby sent me this and I'll have a link in the description below if you are interested in this product I'm going to be decoupaging this tube I cut it 11 inches because that is the width of my piano roll so I'm going to apply a coat of liquid patina and then I'm going to wrap my piano roll around the tube. Once I had the tube covered, I went back over it with the liquid patina. The liquid patina is a great decoupage medium because you can use it to stick your paper down to your surface and then you can go back over it to seal your paper. I think these piano rolls have a beautiful aged look that really looks great with Christmas decor. I styled it with some Christmas greenery, but it would absolutely look beautiful with a Christmas tree and you could make these in different shapes and sizes and do a whole arrangement. If you're interested in piano rolls, I do have some available on my website. For this next project, I want the paper to be a little bit thicker. So I'm folding it over about 11 inches so that way I can make a square and I'm gonna fold it over three times. So now I have a thicker square piece of paper, but I really want it to be flat. So I use just a tea towel and my iron and just ironed the paper and that actually worked perfectly. I wanna create a little envelope, so I'm gonna turn my paper diagonally and I am going to start folding it. So I'm gonna fold the left corner first and then I'm gonna fold the right corner. And then I realized I wanted the right corner to show because that's where the wording is. So I'm gonna fold the bottom and I'm going to fold the right corner over last. And then I'm just gonna use some clear tape just to kind of hold everything in place. And this creates a cute little envelope, perfect to put greenery and berries in. And I just added a little jute twine to the center of it. Now, of course, I styled this for Christmas, but I think this would look amazing year round and you can just change out the greenery with the different seasons all right guys so you can buy these piano rolls and use them for a ton of projects because there is lots of paper on these rolls but make sure you leave a little bit on the roll because the rolls themselves make beautiful decor 
I'm gonna tie these two piano rolls together with a little bit of jute twine and some greenery and they look so cute just styled around my home and once again you know i styled it for christmas but this is something you could definitely use year round or you could not even add any greenery just tie them together with some jute rope All right, guys, this project is going to be super simple, but it's going to look really great. So I took this huge cheese ball container. I promise I did not eat this whole thing by myself. And then I'm just going to take this tablecloth that I had laying around, but you could also use whatever fabric that was going with your holiday theme. Also drop cloth would be great. You know, that's one of my favorites. So anyway, I didn't even cut it. I just tucked it into the big cheese ball container and I'm gonna take some jute twine and I'm just gonna wrap it around the top and tie it up. And that is it. That is all I had to do for this. And it is the perfect size to stick a little Christmas tree in. And you can start collecting all these different size food containers and make a whole collection of these. I think that would look super high end and cost next to nothing to create this. Garage sales and thrift stores are full of purses and I always go check them out, not for the purse itself, but for the handles on the purse. I really like the handles on this particular purse. I just cut the purse off and I added antiquing wax to the handles to darken it up and make it more my style. Then I cut two pieces of drop cloth to the size that I needed. Now the great thing about making stuff yourself is you can make it to whatever size you need. I high glued the edges of the drop cloth together and then I turned it inside out. I always cut off all the hems of my drop cloth because they are perfect to use for projects here and there. So that is what I'm using to attach my bag to the wooden handles. And that is it. This project was quick and simple. And I think the long bag works perfect for Christmas greenery. I decided to keep the bag plain, but you could definitely stamp it or embellish it. For this project, I am going to be using empty seasoning containers. The top just popped off of the pepper container, but the Tony Sastries was glued down, but I was able to cut around it very easily with a utility knife. For this painting technique, I'm going to be using half paint and half baking soda, and then you just want to mix it up really well. It's going to provide lots of texture to this piece and hopefully make it look like a cute little tiny crock. When I'm using baking soda and paint, I try to keep my paintbrush strokes in the same direction because you will see them and that's kind of the whole point of this. You really want to add lots of texture and interest to this piece. The first coat, you just kind of want to get it on there, let it dry, and then with the second coat, you usually get full coverage. Can you see all that beautiful texture? You could definitely leave it like this. It looks great, but I want to give this a little bit of an aged look. So I'm going to add the Waverly Antiquing Wax mixed with some water, and I'm just going to brush it on, and then I am going to wipe it off with a paper towel. If you want to add a little more aging around this piece, you take a dry paintbrush and dip it in your antiquing wax, just a tiny bit, and then you want to dry brush it on your piece. I like to do just the tops and the bottom of the piece just for a more aged look. I want to add a stamp to embellish this piece, so I decided to use, I don't know if it's a deer or a reindeer, from the Merry and Bright IOD stamp. They have a bigger one and a smaller one, and I think these are the perfect little embellishment, and I stamped them in black. That way I could use these year around if I wanted to. Depending on your type of decor style, I think there's so many ways you could paint this or embellish it to fit in your style. So I hope this project has inspired you. I think they came out so cute and they will make such good floral holders year around. 
One thing that I love to do is take my year around decor and just switch it up slightly for the holiday season. I have this little vignette right here and I'm just gonna take the tea towels and switch them out. I actually have both of these available on my website if you're interested. I'm gonna remove the lamb's ear that is perfect for year round and just simply add a Christmas tree to this. I think Christmas trees and vintage pictures are absolutely adorable. So you don't need to change out all your decor Core, you could just add and sprinkle in a little bit of Christmas here and there. I purchased this utensil holder at the thrift store, but I'm pretty sure it originally came from Ikea. And when I saw it, I knew it would look great in my kitchen with a Christmas tree in it. The first thing I want to do is just go ahead and paint it white so I have a nice neutral base to work with. So it's white and I do like white, but I wanna go ahead and add some texture and some warmth to this piece so it's not so bright white. I have some paint left over from the previous project, the antique white paint with the baking soda. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do one very light coat on here and that is going to give it some texture and I don't even mind if some of the white under is showing through and I'm just gonna do the outside of this piece not the inside that was kind of the point of spray painting it white so I wouldn't have to go back and repaint the entire piece I decided to paint mine white so I could use it year round but it also would look amazing painted green or red so if you love decorating your kitchen for Christmas, definitely look out for these little utensil holders that you can turn into little pots for Christmas trees. I saw these decor pieces out at Target in the Hearth and Hand collection. It is simply just a glass jar with two sprigs of greenery. They were selling these for $13.99, but I thought with pieces from the thrift store, this would be super easy to recreate. Just get yourself a simple glass vase and then two sprigs of greenery, stick it in the vase and you are done for probably less than a dollar. And I love the look of this. It is simple and classic and something, again, that would be very easy to change out for the different holidays. We are gonna be using this thrifted sweater for three different projects. Do not forget when you're out thrifting and garage selling to look at the clothing because you can find some very inexpensive pieces that you can use as fabric for your projects. I'm going to start with the biggest project first. I'm just going to use my fabric scissors and cut right under the neckline of this sweater. I'm going to be using, I think it's a hat box that I thrifted a while back. I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but it is very big and I think it will be perfect to put a Christmas tree in. I love the little coffee mug sweaters that I've been seeing people making. I think it's just such a cozy, warm winter look. And I thought, why not do that with this piece that I'm gonna turn into a Christmas tree box? So I simply just put the sweater over the box and now I'm just trying to figure out how I want it to look. And you can definitely change it up with the type of sweater you decide that you wanna use. I just went with a simple white for a kind of white, Christmas look. I decided I liked it better with the sweater covering up most of the box with just a little bit of the box showing at the top and the bottom and I just fold it over the top of the sweater to cover up that raw hem. This was a really quick simple project and definitely something you could add to anything that you wanted to change up for the Christmas and winter season. Just simply add a sweater to it. Now we're gonna use the sleeves of the sweater. I want to create a long hanging pouch, something that kind of feels like a stocking, but it's not a stocking, something that you could put, you know, longer branches, pieces of greenery in, and just create a very cute little winter hanging piece. So I've cut the sleeve off and now I'm just rolling over the edge of the sleeve and I'm going to glue the bottom together to create a pocket so that way whatever we put in will not fall through the bottom and now i'm going to roll over the top and i want to hide those raw edges so i'm just going to hot glue and then roll over the raw edges just creating a clean hem and then i'm going to roll it over again 
I want to keep my piece long, so I'm not going to roll it over too much, but you know, this is personal preference. If you wanted your hanging piece to be shorter, you could definitely roll it over more or roll it over a few times. Now I'm going to create a hanger using some red velvet ribbon that I have. I love the vibrancy of this ribbon against the texture of the sweater. I'm not going to cut an opening in the sweater. I just simply weeded the ribbon through the little openings that are already in the sweater and I'm gonna do that on each side of the piece and just tie it off to hold it in place. Now I'm gonna cut out a little strip around the neck of the sweater. And then I'm going to take this little Christmas tree that I have, it's okay as is, but I think if I just hot glue this little piece of sweater around it, it will definitely cozy it up, give it lots of character, and make it go with the other little cozy Christmas decor that I am making. I decided to just hot glue my sweater to the tree, but you could definitely just make a pocket that goes over the base of the tree. And then if you want to go with a different theme next year, you could simply just remove it. If you love to decorate, you definitely need to be on the lookout for these little hanging baskets at the thrift store. They are so great, not only for the holidays, but for year around. This basket is definitely outdated though. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the little wire and the heart, and then we're gonna take it outside and spray it with chalk paint using our spray gun. If you do not have a paint sprayer, I recommend spray paint. It is so much quicker to paint a basket this way than trying to brush the paint on. Once the paint is dry, I'm going to distress the piece to bring back some of that natural wood color. Now we are ready to accessorize a basket. I'm gonna be using this tea towel. I'm gonna to add in some different greenery just for added layers and texture. And then for the smell, I'm going to add in some cinnamon sticks. Then to hang it, I'm going to add that beautiful red velvet ribbon. You can put this cute little basket anywhere in your home, but my idea was to hang them on the back of my dining room chairs. I think this is such a beautiful vintage look. I thrifted this vintage bait bucket and I immediately fell in love with it. That galvanized age patina, the holes in it, and when it is around Christmas time, my immediate thought is everything with a hole in it needs a Christmas tree. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. But first, I'm going to put some tea lights in it because with all these little holes, I think that would just be so adorable and definitely give off those cozy Christmas vibes. Galvanized buckets are the perfect farmhouse decor for Christmas, both for indoors and outdoors. And the little holes and the tea lights in this piece definitely just puts it over the edge. I love how this looks for Christmas. Well guys, that is the end of this video. I truly hope y'all loved it and were inspired. And if you have any more ideas on what to put Christmas trees in, definitely leave me a comment below. Also, let me know what was your favorite project that I created in today's video. I hope y'all have a wonderful day and I will see y'all in the next video.